Okay, welcome. Welcome to Satsang. Satsang is focused on one thing, what is real. And what is real is lasting and unchanging. So today we're going to do, call the, the real, the unchanging, the beloved. And how we're always seeking the beloved. But initially, it's all unconscious. So the whole point is to be aware of it. We are seekers of the beloved, whether we know it or not. I've done hypnotherapy for 30 years. And every client I had had the same fears and the same problems and the same seeking. And I've learned a lot through seeing the pattern because although the personalities were different, the people were different, everybody was unique, but the questions, the problems, the fears were all the same. And it's all wanting that in whatever form it took to them, but it was always that, that which is real inside us. So, we are all seekers. You know, one of the, one of the pattern that kept repeating throughout the years, which is so interesting, is, and that's, I can call it, that's the, the total initial stage, or the first stage, is that everybody is searching. And uh, every single woman that I had that came to see me, most, most, wanted to find a mate, wanted to find a lover, wanted to find a perfect partner. It was the dream of every single woman that came to see me. And of course, they weren't in touch with what is that's making them seek this. What is it that wants, wants to do this? Because they're not doing it. It is being done through them, but they think they are doing it. It is they who want it. You see, this is what's so beautiful about knowing about the Beloved and the seeking, is that once you get in touch with, with your seeking, which is all unconscious, you know, and it's such a driving force, you can't help it, then you begin to see something so clear that everybody is doing, but what you are seeking is yourself, in that totality. Um, I found also that most men that came to see me wanted two things, sometimes both of them, or one or the other, sexual experience or power, or both. And it was very strong with most men. And all these desires are normal and natural. So, so what I have learned throughout the years is that we go through a process and I would, I'm going to put them into four stages. Now you might say, are there really four stages? Well, in a way it seems so. Because when we do not know we are seeking, then of course we go through stages of seeking. For example, I call this the first stage. The first stage, everybody is seeking fulfillment, seeking to feel good. This can lead you to alcohol, this can lead you to even smoking, because it's an addiction. Uh, you can have your coffee first thing in the morning, or drugs to, to get a high. But you see, the one thing that I'd like to stress here, and if your heart can, can resonate to this, is that no matter what you're doing, every intention, every desire, every motivation, is for one thing only. And that's why it's called the Beloved, because it's made out of love, pure love. The Beloved is the one that keeps the earth rotating around the sun. It's what makes the flowers grow. It's what makes a seed capable of creating a gigantic tree. It's what makes the fetus in the womb of a mother become a living, breathing human being. You see? And... <clears throat> So, so this is the initial stage. We're not aware at all. We think we're all doing this, you see, instead of being done through us. And so, so when we fail and we don't find, we think there's something wrong, not realizing that if you think you're doing, something else happens when you seek, and you think you are doing the seeking. 
then no matter what you achieve, it will fail. Just like, for example, has been proven that when you seek a mate and a relationship, it becomes codependent. I want him to make me happy. What if something happens to this? You become codependent, you see? So, before you know it, you're not growing because of your need for fulfillment makes you seek it outside yourself. Then, and these people don't know what they really want. You see, if you ask them, what is it that you really want? And some of them say, I really don't know. And then we go to a second stage of seeking the beloved. You come to know what you want. And this is a beautiful stage because the talents that you have and the gifts that you have are meant to be expressed. But what is it that is beautiful about expressing our gifts when we know what you want? Because we disappear within the love of our gift. You could be want to be a lawyer maybe, or a doctor, or a writer, or an artist, or a designer, it doesn't matter. What it is, once, once you know what you want, then you immerse yourself into it totally and love takes over. And when love takes over, you forget yourself. And when you forget yourself, that is the periphery, the outside you, the you that thinks it's doing everything. And when you start forgetting yourself, you are in that euphoria of bliss, of involvement of what you're doing, because you're good at it. When you're good at something, it is love that is doing it at that moment. But we go, but there's another thing here that happens, you see, at this point. We think we are the doers, instead of being done through us. <laughs> so, we think we are doing it, and when you think you're doing something, it prevents you from total immersion, you see? Because then you hate yourself for making a mistake, you see? And you go through all this. But when you realize there's love working through you, the beloved working through you, Wow, what rest, what relaxation, what finesse, what expertise comes into being in whatever you do. And there's no selfishness, you see, there's no egoic preoccupation in it. Then this, this force takes over. But unfortunately, the second stage, which I call the second stage, throughout the years I've learned these stages from people, is that you think you're really doing it. And then, you to reach a third stage, Provided, of course, that you begin to see how happy you feel when you are doing what you love doing. When you begin to see that, you begin to see, it. yes, it's the love that makes me, it's the, the total immersion in it that makes me feel good. Therefore, there is that feeling that I want. I don't know what to call it. Okay, we're calling it the beloved this time. So the third stage is when you realize that everything that you want, everything that you express, uh, please listen to the word, everything, okay? There is nothing but that, but most people have no idea of it, you see? When you realize that, then of course you begin to give yourself to it. And you say, yes, this is, this, this is what every goal is for. Now you're ready to really wake up spiritually. And then the fourth stage, you wake up. Now what is the fourth stage? Now. The fourth stage is very advanced, and I feel that satsang is very important for the fourth stage, because it is scary, and yet it is so beautiful. You know what the fourth stage is? You're willing to die for the beloved. It's a strong one. It's a powerful one. You're willing to die for the beloved. What does it mean to die? Physically? No. Not physically. To die to your ego. You see? Because when you die to your ego, then the beloved takes over. And you realize that what you've been seeking, what you've been wanting is that 